All right. Welcome to Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 1st of December, 2021. So here were the topics that I had. News, election status report, and highlights from the mailing list and community forum. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda? Nothing uh, specific. So I would like uh, to add the CD events uh, to the note. Uh, oh, report. yes, yes. That CD events. Good. Okay. You know, also maybe sync up on uh, Google Summer of Code in general to understand what's our plan for the next year. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure whether we have all people needed for this discussion. Okay, good. Any other topics? Nope. Sounds okay. okay. So by way of news, the LTS was released today, 2.319.1, with more inclusive naming, UI improvements, and some removals of outdated and unsafe components. Thanks very much to everyone who's involved. Uh, 3.23 released earlier this week with log recorders configured as code and path to HTML elements, path to HTML elements are using stable selectors for UI testing. Yay! What does path to HTML elements mean? Uh, it means that when you need to refer to an HTML element in a, a UI-driven test, oh, okay. the, the thing is stable now instead of unpredictable. Yeah, okay, so it's a testing thing, not a, yeah, okay. Right. And Uli, Uli, I'm sure could give a much better description of why that matters than I could. I'm, I'm talking from ignorance there mostly. <laughs> No, I, uh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, now that you said test, it makes sense. So go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's really a technical detail. So it's really hard to, uh, to locate the elements in the uh, browser interface. And it's good to have them stable to assign these. We have a lot of dynamic forms, these repeatables where you click and then we have some new thing appearing on the screen and we need to identify all these elements in our tests and this is you know, really complicated if we can't assign the elements then our tests are very fragile and so now the tests are green <laughs> that's fine <laughs> great thank you and then election status report olivier Sure. So I closed the election poll uh, yesterday. So normally everybody should be able to watch the result, the detailed result, if they just use the same process to vote. Um, so if I just take all the different position, because most of the position, we only had one candidate. So the first, I mean, on my list is the board member. So Mark Waits and Oleg and Nenashev won the board member election. We had something we had 81 person registered for the election to vote and 53 or 54, something like that, effectively voted for the election. Um, so, so that's that's the correct number. Um, regarding the different officers, we have the documentation, and which is the first one in my list. The documentation we had Mark Waite and Said Bostan Dust. Um, who, present, who, who were um, um, on the list there. So Mark Waite won the documentation um, officer role. And if we continue for the other officer role, we only had one candidate. So Subadek so Folinier won the security, I mean, is the new security officer. Um, on the infrastructure, Damien Duportal was the only one candidate. So he's effective the, the new infrastructure officer. For the event officer, Alice Satong was the only one candidate. So she's um, the next event officer. And the release officer, we only had one candidate who's Tim Jacomb. So it will continue um, to be the, the release officer. So that's that's uh, for, the, for, the, um, for the election updates. Um, 
I think it would be nice uh, to organize a retrospective about what happened this year compared to last year and the year before. I think overall, I'm quite happy with the process, but yeah, we always have, we can always do better anyway. So now the, the, the next question is what we do with the two groups uh, on this course that we use for the election. So one is um, election committee. So during the election, we only had um, Kevin, Evanina, and me. Um, so we mainly use that group to discuss about um, uh, ongoing um, issues and yeah, so just to coordinate during the, the election. And we use a second group, which is Jenkins election voters. Um, yeah, if if we if we like, if we are interested to reuse the same process next year. Um, we have to decide what we do with those two groups if we let people go inside or not and so on. I don't have strong opinion. I mean, I do have some strong opinion, but um, I'm interested to hear feedback here. Any question? No, I don't know if, I don't know if I want to make a decision right now, but um, I, I, I'm on board with more formalized procedure. I'm also wondering if maybe we want to nominate someone to run the elections earlier. Um, you know, doing it middle of last, middle of this year with only two months away, kind of put it a little bit of a tight deadline. So it, that way, if we do have someone who, who wants to run the election, then they can make these decisions a little bit stronger. But I'm also, I'll, I'm also of the opinion everything should be open. And so I'm good with adding more people. Yeah, that, that's something having more people in the in the, in the election committee, um, I think would be nice. So the way we did this year was um, we had the two board members who were not up for re-election and I was involved in the process because I was not interested to be re-elected as an infrastructure officer. Um, so yeah, I lead, I lead this initiative this year. I think it would be nice to have someone just um, from the outside um, helping with the election and maybe that's something that we can start earlier than two months before the election. I actually questions? liked how it worked with the groups in uh, this course. Uh, it was very easy to communicate and uh, it took me some time to figure out the notifications but but uh, but then it was uh, you know you didn't have to check uh, mails and if if the people that were supposed to get the mails got them who was supposed to be in the group had access to the group and uh, well it it doesn't really matter how 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 much we want it limited or open i i i personally think that the the, the discourse worked uh, uh, well enough for communication any other feedback I'm okay. I'm plus one. I'm plus one for allowing more people to join the the uh, the elections. Oh dear, the elections yeah. committee. I think that sounds great. Yeah. For me, the most pressing question uh, for the next election is how do we get more voters? Because uh, I think uh, we could have used uh, more channels. Well, we always could have used more channels. Um, it's always a limitation of time and uh, etc. Uh, but uh, it's really a good question uh, how we could actually have proper representation uh, in the community. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, regarding these elections, I do have some reservations, but at the same time, uh, what can we do about that? I mean, if you have if you have suggestions about communities to contact, yeah, I mean, that's something that everybody can participate. Uh, we try to make the process as public as possible. Um, we try to be as much as possible transparent on the process. I think we have a lot of things to improve. One of them that surprised me. Um, when I when I when I in the first blog post I explained that. Um, we, wouldn't come, we would be very open about the kind of contribution that we consider uh, acceptable for, for, being, uh, for voting for the election. A lot of people contacted me to double check if they were, um, if their contribution were okay. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's something that, su that surprised me this year. Um, because yeah, um, yeah. 
But otherwise, regarding the communication, I've been involved in a previous edition and not having to rely on the emails was really nice. Um, and I really like um, using discourse, discourse for the communication because it was so much easier just to draft communication, publish them and so on. My only, I mean, this, my, my only disappointment, I would say, in the process this year, I mean, the two deeper disappointments, the two main disappointments that I had. The first one was I couldn't anymore do, I guess, GDPR. I couldn't anymore just invite all the PI, all, all the people during the election. So I ask everybody to, to validate their email address on CIVS platform. That was one of the things. So the, the, the process there was a little bit more complicated. I mean, not that much because five minutes was enough, but yes, still. And the second thing, um, because people did not receive the invitation on their email address, um, it was not always clear for the different people which email address to use. So what I also often got as a feedback was people were uh, wondering if they were invited for the election and because they were not using the correct email address for the platform. So in my case, I was using the email address um, from this course. Um, so yeah. And I'm sure we can, we can come up with more things in a retro. I don't want to go too far into it now. Okay, sure. Um, one thing uh, I, when we were, we were looking at discourse earlier, one thing we could do is, is add uh, LinkedIn um, logins, because I think there are, I don't know if anyone who would be considered a contributor doesn't have a GitHub, but for a community, yes, I think LinkedIn might be another good option. Yep, that's yeah, a good thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem is that uh, then you can uh, register twice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely a possibility, but I'd rather see more people join than have more barriers. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm wondering, do you do you guys know about any big events where Jenkins will be present in one way or another coming next year? Well, Fosdem uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, that's a bit early because when you when you mentioned all like that, like what you consider a pressing question is how to enlist more, more voters. Uh, I was trying to promote it in my social media, but I don't have great following, and uh, and where we actually have a lot of people uh, that are interested in Jenkins is Jenkins booth at events, and if we had I don't know a QR code with link to registration page page for voters something that you know is as easy as it gets i i guess that could maybe encourage people to to do that not that someone has to know that they have to look at jenkins.io or or read my tweet or yeah I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure some of you have have quite a following on twitter but uh, yeah um, a, a little bit different approach I think something that may help for the future election is if we keep the Jenkins election voter group open, people can keep, I mean, registering there. So we can just have in the community section where we explain the election process and people can just reg register in, in advance. And, and I'm still working on getting more and more of the community into discourse because right now we're spread so thin, it's very hard to reach anybody. But I also think our community of least contributors has gone way down. So, you know, 80 people signing up is still a lot more contributors than I, active contributors than I thought we had. So. Any other feedback before we move on to the next topic? Well, I'll just say thank you for doing such a great job, Olivier. Thank you. Yeah, same for me, Olivier. Thank you very, very much for, for one, for thinking of using discourse. That I, I think that was absolutely brilliant. It made things much simpler in, in so many ways. 
So when you, I have one last question. Um, so we said that we would announce the results uh, on Friday, but the results are kind of already public. Um, so should we write a blog post on this? Who should do it? We should do that. Somebody not. from the election committee. Oh, I was about to say not it. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I can. I'm I'm very bad writer. I don't like writing, so I bet I can if no one else is up for it. For me, it felt awkward in 2019 uh, to write an announcement blog post. So, no, that's fine. I can do it. I'll just go find the last one and copy and paste and search and place Gavin with a leg. That sounds a brilliant idea. It's called software reuse. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. That's it's blogging as code. Yeah, Lake Morgan uh, works for me. Yeah, we're not going <laughs> to we're not going to fix uh, last names. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else then on the election? Thanks so much, Olivier. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we should. Just... <laughs> We might want to send some of our massive amounts of, you know, like our billion dollars in, in funding uh, to the uh, Concourse, Concordia people, um, just to, you know, they've been great at doing it again. And I know it's university funded, but we do have some room for throwing something at them. Good question. Yeah. So uh, Professor Myers. It sounds like he's like a one person operation. Yeah, I, I think I, I had that that feeling myself watching the tweets about his bringing it back to life. Yeah, that was very kind of him. If if he wasn't a university, I would have suggested work reach out to him and say, hey, do you want us to host it? But a university tends to like to host their own things, so right. Yeah. So we can send him drink and shrug. Yeah, I'm thinking that's actually probably not a bad idea. That's that's a great idea. Let me take Mark to connect to send him Jenkins swag. I think that's a great idea. I would love to see him in a Jenkins t-shirt. And in, in general, even if you send him a couple of extras to give to any students and stuff he works with, students don't get swag. Right. And it's always a big win for them. So mm -hmm. great. Will do. Okay. So I'm not sure where we stand uh, on budgets for Schwag, etc. I mean, uh, so Alisa became uh, events officer. Uh, so I guess going forward, uh, she will be taking care of that. Uh, but yeah, handling Schwag in the current state is just a huge pain. And yeah, well, uh, if I may add something, uh, uh, although I appreciate if someone wants to send me something I would prefer to be asked and kindly say no because maybe we don't need to fly things around half of the world you know <laughs> there is a lot of reasons for not doing that which is not me saying it, it's uh, fundamentally wrong but it's uh, I, I know of a lot of people that would prefer to have an option say thank you and don't waste uh, uh, resources on that I Put think inside in oh in general, it's it's a link to the, the swag site and not that you have to accept it. Hey, you know, hey, thank you for all your help. If you're interested, here's a link to get some free swag. But I agree, don't don't just blindly send people stuff. Well, and we don't have their addresses. We don't have any way of shipping to them. So we can't do it blindly. Or Gavin's we? correct. Well, Professor Myers. <laughs> idea. Okay. okay. So so, so we have to, all we do, all that Alyssa's current process does is sends them an email and invites them if they wish to enter data into a form. And if they choose not to enter it, no problem, nothing sent. And a thousand t-shirts to the university. <laughs> but we did talk about some kind of uh, uh, environment friendly SWAC, um, um, how do you say it, uh, option. So you could have like a voucher to plant a tree or something like that. I'm, 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 I didn't really research that. I don't know what really makes sense, but uh, I've seen people uh, bragging on Twitter that they chose to plant a tree instead of socks and they are, uh, they are happy about it. 
it, it depends on the provider. Uh, so for example, I know that Oktoberfest is doing that, um, but it really depends. I'm not sure that the CDF allowed to plant a tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, they can do it on our own. Uh, you donate, contribute, and one of uh, uh, governance board members plants a tree and uh, records it on the video. Nice. So Mark, do you have a backyard? I do have a backyard and oh, there are plenty of places solved. near me, plenty of places near me that would love to have more trees planted that are not my backyard. <laughs> so, oh, or do one of those services and expense it. Yeah, we both exactly. Them. Yep. Okay. So ready for next topic highlights from the mailing lists. Uh, I, yeah, there, I mean, I assume this is me again. Uh, there hasn't, there wasn't a lot in the, in the last two weeks. Uh, I think I suspect with Thanksgiving, everyone's just focused on family or U.S. Thanksgiving. Uh, I actually didn't see the user interface improvements. So I don't know who added that one. That's, that's from me. And that's lots of traffic in the, on Jenkins core. Okay. So there's no actual, uh, post about it anywhere though. Yeah, no, this is just, well, the user experience. So user experience SIG uh, recording is on, I think, uh, didn't we get that onto community? If not, I'm remiss I and I need- I didn't see it. Okay, so Mark to put okay. the UX SIG recording on community. Yeah, I think what, which is the next item. I think what I tried last week where I put the government meeting notes and the recording on the community site worked really well. Um, I didn't look at the metrics to see how many people are viewing it, but it's pretty public and clear that way. So um, I'm thinking longer term of modeling a little bit more like, uh, so Matrix has a this week in Matrix or this, I don't think we want to do every week, but it, we could do like a this week in, or this month in Jenkins and show the various SIG recordings and links to the meeting notes, whatever else. Like I'm thinking of that kind of idea to get more community involvement because I think right now a lot of the, the SIGs are all isolated in their little thing and nobody sees them unless they know to go to the Gitter channels, so. Well, the, uh, for me, one of the questions is pipeline authoring because we haven't removed meetings from the calendar, but as far as I can tell, it's completely inactive at the moment. Yeah, and there are actually several SIGs like that that are completely inactive. Well, yeah. uh, Cloud Native SIG is an active, effective Kara switched to CDF. She has no time. Uh, I currently have no time. Yeah, I might uh, take it over later to facilitate uh, cloud events and open telemetry integrations, uh, but uh, no commitment at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so if we start we start switching this model, and even if we start saying, okay, you know, once a month, every, I know we're, we talked about it in the past, but every SIG leader submits a blurb to add to a little post, then we can actually say, you know, there's there has been no time for meetings, looking for a new author or that kind of thing, you know, the more we do that kind of stuff, the little bit more visible it becomes. And then it means it does, selfishly, it does make the discourse a little bit less, I need help, demand, I want help, and have a lot more other discussions as well. Um, kind of related, I also changed the colors for the categories so that uh, we can actually see when it's not asking for help, it's a different color. So, but not really a highlight, but yeah. No, we could just uh, put some six on fire uh, by uh, taking some uh, topics. So for example, let's deprecate the blue ocean for UX seek. Uh, let's uh, replace the Jenkins pipeline by Tikton for pipeline authoring seek. Yeah. Uh, so I'm still not uh, banned from this meeting, right? <laughs> yeah, we just troll everybody with, but we have to wait for April for that. <laughs> just to give plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, that's a thing. And then we did the discussion for Java 8 has sort of tapered out. Uh, but they, there was some really good discussions on the mail list about uh, whether or not Java 8 or Java 11. Um, it, I think I, I personally agree that the reasoning for switching should not be based on who's using it, but uh, the desire to upgrade and use it because people will just stay with the old uh, version as long as possible. And uh, as I pointed out to Mark this week, we actually had someone on Reddit ask, how to upgrade from one, what was it, one six, one six hundred to two thirty or two three hundred. 
So six years of Jenkins updates because they hadn't got around to updating until their disk died. So I, yeah, we should have more discussion about what we want it to be as opposed to what current people are currently using. I feel so bad for them. Six years of updates to try to. But uh, see how Jenkins uh, is reliable. Maybe they've got six years of uptime. So then it crashed and they decided to update finally. They said they upgraded from CentOS 4 to Red Hat 8 or whatever. And that's what made them do the upgrade. And you're like, wow, wow. I mean, not a bad idea. Just, wow, that's uh, impressive. Just running silently forever. But yeah, that's my update. Great. Next topic then, Oleg, CD events. Yeah, so just uh, fresh news. Um, CD events has been officially accepted to the Continuous Delivery Foundation as an incubating project. So what it means for us um, as uh, the Jenkins community, this summer we had a Google Summer of Code project targeting integration with cloud events. And um, there were some discussions about uh, actually following the format of CD events. And uh, when uh, the student was working on this project, uh, some initial specification was followed, but this specification has changed since that. So Jenkins is welcome to be one of uh, um, uh, the first adopters for CD events. And probably we should consider that, but uh, if you do so, we will need some updates in the plugin. Uh, just to clarify, what do you mean by CD events? Like events where you organize events and people yeah, can so talk? So CD event uh, is, um, is a specification for continuous integration and continuous delivery events. Uh, uh, and this specification is based on the top of cloud events. Okay. So cloud events is a kind of unified uh, event format and CD events is just a specification uh, for how you describe uh, various events like build past, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so okay, that, okay, okay. Uh, it, can, uh, it can be followed by multiple uh, CI and CD systems. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, um, basically no immediate action. Uh, I might return back to that because yeah, personally I have interest. Uh, CD events can be rooted into Captain because Captain, uh, the, uh, my open source project at work, uh, uh, it's based on uh, CD events, sorry, on cloud events. And actually Dynatrade has been one of contributors to the CD events specification. So for me, it's definitely interesting to have this integration, um, but yeah, I'm not sure about the time commitment when I get to that. Still, it's uh, quite good that we get uh, such standardization happening at, uh, in the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And currently we have around 12 uh, entities, open source projects and companies that declared their intent to adopt uh, CD events. Because yeah, companies like uh, Frontier, CloudBees, uh, DigitalOcean, are they also welcome to join? Just saying. I mean, I guess technically we do have a, a CD, um, but not really. Would it would like GitHub deployments count as be in there where you can say you did a deployment at this time? Would that be something a CD event would want? Yeah. Well then, yeah, actually we might be interested. I don't know how to tell people. So yeah, anyway, this specification is just starting. So let's see how it goes. Okay. And basically that's it. So it's just for your information. Uh, right now, no input on uh, Jenkins community, but still I think to know about. And so as companies are interested in joining or as individuals are interested in joining, should they contact the the event SIG of the of CDF or exactly. go to the, the project? So that's where the uh, so yeah. Currently, uh, CD events SIG is basically a bootstrap for CD events project. Uh, so how it happens uh, currently, SIG governance uh, basically implements uh, the project governance. It's about uh, changing in the future, uh, but let's see how it goes. 
so if you're interested, just uh, join uh, events uh, special interest group meeting. Actually, there are two work streams right now. The first is vocabulary, and secondly, it's CD events. Great, thank you. So next was Google Summer of Code. Um, Oleg? Yeah, so just a quick update. Uh, most likely it will happen. At least uh, there is no signs that it won't. And if it happens, yeah, the application uh, deadline for organization will be in the beginning of February. So the question is uh, whether we participate. If so, who would lead that? Because yeah, I'm not sure whether I will be taking uh, um, or call me if we participate a CDF. Um, because, yeah, let's say two years in a row, I have pretty bad experience with that. I would be or call me if it was Jenkins project applying separately. Uh, but uh, for CDF, I'm not ready to commit right now. Um, so, yeah, and basically, hence uh, the question. Yeah, do so we, I've. Oh, sorry. Okay. Do we want to apply? So, who will be driving that? I very much want to have a supply, and I've got a, a, a person in mind that I've been discussing with as a potential lead for it. So, basically, trying to follow um, the guidance that Oleg, you've shown in the past on how to be a, an effective org, org admin and uh, take it from there. I, I think fitting under CDF is still good rather than being separate Jenkins project, but open to consider either. Um, in this case, this person has expressed interest and we're preparing them right now to be ready to, to get involved. So it's a team member of mine at work. So let's see. So for us, uh, decision deadline will be later January. Yeah, speaking of that, is anyone working with uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation to get uh, JSOC money routed uh, to uh, our LFX uh, uh, crowdfunding account? Uh, no, I, I good question. I had not had not started that. So is that that's a Google Summer of Code pays funds to the open source projects that participate and yes, uh, this year they went uh, to the Continuous Delivery Foundation, and what we discussed with you and Kara that we need to submit a request to get sure to make sure it gets transferred to Jenkins, because uh, when we decide to do sponsorship for students when everything reopens then we would definitely use this money. Right, okay. Great, all right, I'll, I'll get, that, get that request started. But to Jenkins. Oh, it's to Jenkins. Yeah, it's, it, basically it's to the Jenkins, how, how do I describe it to them? To, to Jenkins is, is ambiguous, isn't it, in terms of a financial LFX, entity? Uh, no, LFX, uh, uh, my crowdfunding account is quite specific. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. The logistics is not trivial, but it's possible. Okay. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other topics we need to discuss today? So I just have a few topics to share here. So the CI CD dev room has been accepted for first time this year. So we have to announce it pretty soon. And uh, yeah, it would be nice to, to have talks um, about Jenkins there. But the deadline for the call for proposal will be very short um, because we are already 1st of December. And the um, uh, dev rooms haven't been officially announced yet, right? No, because we just heard about the news uh, yesterday or the day before. So it's, yeah. yeah. 
So now you start to see um, call for proposal announced uh, on the FOSDEM mailing list. So you have something like five of or six dev room, um, but at least on the CICD dev room, we still have to, to, to announce something. The only thing is last year we had a deadline by the end of December to have the agenda. And so that was, I mean, we are really late in the process because they announced uh, accepted dev room very late. And so we, I mean, yeah, we, we won't have a lot of time to, to, to announce it and then yeah. since we are talking about FOSDEM, uh, do we want to have a Jenkins uh, stand this year? Because I'm not sure what's your perception from the previous year, uh, whether it's efficient to invest time in that. I think from my perspective, nobody came to the stand and it was really boring. <laughs> So uh, I stayed two hours with uh, n nobody coming to the booth. So, so, so yeah. and the other people also said nobody is really interested yeah. in a virtual booth. It's, yeah. Yeah. So we could technically just do online meetup in the time frame of the booth, but yeah, running such long term event like we did before. So the first thing is, I, 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 would, I would not organize an online event during the first time. I mean, during Saturday or Sunday, because people will be busy with other stuff if they are interested to attend the first time um, online, because first time will be online as well this year. Um, I think I would be more interested by a small contributor summit um, around first time, like we did last year or the year before. But otherwise, yeah. Virtual booths is not something very popular, whatever the conference. So I guess the default answer would be no. No. Because it's difficult to find people uh, available for the whole weekend to stay in front of the computer with no activity in, at the stand at the booth. Mm -hmm. I agree. That, that's it for me regarding for them. Mark, you muted. You're still muted, Mark. Sorry, talking doesn't help with that without a microphone. Uh, post, well, let's call it done then. We'll post the recording in 24 hours or less. Sure. Give me a ping and I'll clean up. I'll put the notes up online. Um, right. while, while you're mentioning the notes, could we use the same tag everywhere? Because I really like, um, I mean, what you put in place uh, during the last governance uh, meeting, but it's not really easy to, to find all the meeting notes right now in this course. So I'm just wondering if we could just use something like uh, the so, tag. So the same post or same post to just add to the bottom? No, I was just wondering if we could agree on a, on a tag so we can also publish infrastructure meeting notes and the other notes. Uh, what did I use last time? I didn't use any tags last time. So yes, because yes, we can. I, I, because the first, I, I mean, I did an experiment. Uh, so I created the tag meeting, I think, but it's mm -hmm. maybe not the best one. So we, you only have uh, the infrastructure. So maybe we could uh, just use a tag to quickly identify meeting notes. Yeah, well, you and I can chat afterwards about what you tried and what worked and what didn't, and then we'll keep trying with that. So, yeah, I'm on board with that, though. Meeting. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to turn off the recording, and then, Gavin, if you and Olivia want to continue your conversation on, on that, that's great with me. I was just going to DM them, but that's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs>